Hello everyone! Last time, we talked about the war between the Alliance and the Horde, a campaign that led through Darkshore all the way to Teldrassil. Occupy the tree, hold it hostage to prevent retaliation, create a wedge that would split the Alliance from within and slay Malfurion Stormrage. That was the plan, a wound that would never heal, but when the Queen had her moment to take the kill, she decided to let Sour Fang finish the job. The old soldier felt like he had struck a dishonorable blow. Honor, no matter how dire the battle, never forsake it. He did not finish it. Her overconfidence, and perhaps even by the grace of a loon, all of that saved Malfurion's life. Darnassus was never the prize though, so after her master strategists gave up their weapon that would destroy the Alliance hope, she decided to take it back and give the order. Burn it! The Alliance would come for them. Not in glory, but in pain. And the Banshee Queen orders Saurfang to plan the defenses and begin evacuating their people. But to Saurfang, honor means everything, and he cannot stand with his war chief. He plans to find his honorable victory in death by facing the might of the Alliance by himself. Yet Sekan, son of Akazi, he is able to talk him out of it. He has lost his father, like Saurfang lost Renosh. The Horde is all they have now, despite where their war chief might take them. Saurfang, he decides not to abandon the sons and daughters of the Horde. Live another day. He stands with them, as the Alliance forces make ready to seize Lord Ron and Champions of the Horde, they are called in to the Undercity. Brill, some way, somehow, it has already fallen, but there are still civilians in the Undercity that need to be evacuated. Soldiers of the Horde, the time has come. Our enemies strike against the Undercity and seek to claim Lord Ron for their own. The Undercity is no longer safe for civilians. The war rages above. And dozens of spies have infiltrated our walls. We have herded the cowards to the Mage District and have secured the rest of the city. While civilians are being teleported away as quickly as possible, we take on the SI-7 that's crawling through the city. Bombs and blight, they're being piled up all around the place. But attacking us, that's not the only reason why the SI-7 is here. More spies! We have them cornered! We've been compromised! I got the intel. We just gotta make it out of here with it. Plan B it is then. <whistles> Druids of the Claw, attack! Renzik the Shiv. He was actually mentioned in the story that comes with the Collector's Edition. He is second in command to Mephias Shaw, and he's been spying on the Horde from Orkamar for quite a while. He and Mirabella, they make their escape with the intel, but they don't exactly explain what the intel is. My personal guess that it's information on weaponizing as right, but that's purely a guess on my part and worries for later, as Druids of the Claw, they jump at us from the shadows. Further into the city, we clean out more to give the population a chance to escape. With our job done, we teleport to the keep and we report back to the war chief. Is the Undercity evacuated? Yes, war chief. Then it's time to finish this once and for all. Sarfang, rally your troops. I will prepare the Azerite machine. Champions, your war chief commands you. It is time to take arms against the Alliance. Their numbers are strong, but we are stronger. We are the Horde. We crush those who would bring us harm. Luktar Ogar! Champions of the Alliance, the time has come for us to claim what is rightfully ours. The final push to retake Lordaeron Keep commences at dawn. The Horde and their war chief must answer for their crimes. High King Endwin Rin summons the Champions of the Alliance to report for duty and launch a full skill assault on Lordaeron. By the time that we arrive, Brill has already fallen, and a massive path of destruction, it takes us straight to the gates of Lord Ron. Brothers and sisters of the Alliance, hear me! The Horde's cowardly attack on Teldrassil brought war upon us, and made clear what is truly at stake. Their war chief's goal was not to capture a single city, but to destroy our way of life, and snuff out hope for generations to come. To secure our future, the Banshee Queen must answer for her crimes. Her dark reign ends today. Together, we will drive her evil from this land and raise our banners above Lordaeron once more. Stand as one for the, for the Alliance! Alliance! 
the might of the alliance has gathered, yet the horde rallies at the high overlord's battle cry and the forces clash. It's over, Sylvanas! The walls of Lordaeron will soon come crashing down around you! You have no idea what you're up against, boy king. We've only just begun. I've never seen anything like it! Anything made can be broken. Gen, follow me! The effort put in to weaponize Azerite that is put on display as a massive Azerite war machine enters the field. A small difference between the Alliance and Horde point of view is that on the Horde side you can actually see it run over a whole bunch of the troops. With Anduin again, they didn't jump onto it and they tried to bring it low. Now this does not happen on the Alliance side, but I think that's more because of game mechanics. It might have been too difficult to actually put NPCs on an attackable target, rather than as a prop as the Horde sees it. All the same, this Azerite war machine, it does some insane damage. The Alliance siege towers are destroyed, as well as the troops, while waves of Alliance forces, they take on the Horde. Knight Captain Emery sends out the Rifleman, Master Shapeshifter Liara pushes forward with the Archers, and Meccano Ranger Coxbark, he leads the Drenna Ballistas and troops to battle. Yes, even the Gnomes and the Drenai, they get the moment to shine, but all of them fall to the might of the Horde. They do, however, by Ganon and win the time that they need it to dismantle the Azerite War Machine. There must be another way, War Chief. This is no time for sentiment, High Overlord. War demands that we take a more direct approach. It's killing her own troops. You can grab one of these backpacks and get to work! <laughs> Soldiers of the Horde, your brothers and sisters lie wounded on the battlefield. There is no honor in this victory if we abandon our own. Slay them all, champions. Mark my words. King Anduin and his army did not come here for their amusement. They mean to destroy us. Show them no mercy, for they would show you none in return. Maintain your honor, heroes. Ah! Sylvanas has no time for games and will do anything to secure victory, including use of the Blight against not only the Alliance, but also hitting her own forces. The Fallen are resurrected to serve her once more, which had some wonder why she was able to do this without the power of the Valkyr. There's a difference between being resurrected by a Valkyr and becoming a proper Forsaken, compared to what we see here, compared to the skeleton bros that she creates. Even Death Knights are capable of performing something like this, so it's it's a low form of necromancy compared to what the Valkyr can accomplish. Now here's of the Horde, they're given a choice. They can accept only a gas mask and perhaps follow Saurfang's words, save those wounded on the battlefield. Or they can also choose to pick up a gas canister and help out, push the Alliance back and blight the lands. She's raising their bodies. We must evacuate the wounded! The blight is too dangerous, my king! We cannot afford to... The Alliance leaves no soldier behind. Not this time. My king, our siege towers are lost. Our numbers are waning. Father, help me. I need your guidance. I need... I The Blight has broken our ranks! Our assault has been for nothing.
We end this now. Sylvanus was so close at claiming victory, but the daughter of the sea makes a return. The ship of her father, the one that she once upon a time stepped away from to try and uphold peace, that has been raised from the bottom of the sea and now used to save the day. Everyone, move! Cut them off with the reserves! Do not let them pass! Sawfang, where did you go? Leave it to me, Dark Lady. I will lead the reserves in the assault. The Alliance will go no further, I swear it. Meet with Lothamar, quickly. Do not fail me, Nathanos. I obey my queen. Heroes, follow me! Jaina, thank the light you've come. You are sorely needed in this fight. I stand with you, my king. The Horde will pay for its crime. These walls won't hold for long. We should not linger here. Sound advice. Sylvanas didn't have much time to prepare for this attack. But we cannot afford to underestimate her. Everyone, fall into position. We strike on my command. Gen, I need you to cover our backs. It's too risky to funnel everyone through the side of the keep all at once. There will certainly be traps. Agreed. I'll guard the rear flank. Let's move. Jaina, block the exits! Don't let them call for reinforcements! It's Windseeker Durja that the Alliance faces, and some of you asked if he's a hybrid between a shaman and a druid, considering the spells that he uses and the shapeshifting. He reminds me a lot of the Amani trolls that we faced in Suleiman, those that were able to harness the power of the Loa, but again, that's purely a guess on my part. Some also say that Zeppi boy, Zekan, that he died during the battle, but his fate, as far as I'm aware, is still unknown. He's not the same troll that Anduin pummels into the ground during the cinematic, and he's also not this troll. No, Excellent you. work, everyone. Oh, yeah. Let's keep Stop, moving. Yeah. I'm ready. Bane, gather the catapults and every apothecary you can find. Send them to the keep at once. Yes, Blightcaller. But where is Sourfang? There is no time. We have but precious moments before we lose our terrain advantage. The choke point we create will funnel them through the side of the keep and thin their ranks. With us out in the open, we will outnumber them ten to one. Understood. I will meet you as soon as I can. No. Lothamar and I will handle the interlopers. I can't risk leaving the Warchief unguarded. You are not to leave her side. How long are you expecting to hold them off? What is the War Chief's strategy? It is better if she tells you herself. Now go! Champions, with me! We rally in the keep! Your War Chief commands it! Saurfang is gone, and it's up to us to stop the Alliance in their tracks. While Sylvanas, she makes ready for their final gambit, in case all of this goes south. Nice touch that Nathanos actually rides one of the hyenas that used to stand with him all the way back in the Plaguelands. And where in the past, Lorfmar was second in command and did not get along with Nathanos. These days, things are a little bit different. Lorfmar, command our rangers from the flank. Position them on the rooftops. With pleasure, Blightcaller. Blightthrowers, you are our front line. You will create a swath of blight between us and the enemy. Soldiers, fall into position! The Alliance approaches! It is you who is outnumbered now. That army is enormous. Give the word and I will teleport us to safety. If we turn tail now, we just become prey. No, we will fight and die if we must for what we believe in. Your time is up, King Anduin. Victory for the Forsaken! Alliance, hold your ground! Let us even the odds, King Ring. Illyria, thank the light you've made it. I am known for my timing, your majesty. Mechatork, are you ready for battle? Indubitably! I brought some extra machines for backup. Feel free to give them a spin. Jaina, Gen, help me with Blightcaller and Lorthamar. Illyria, take the rest of our troops and focus on routing the enemy army. As you wish. Champions, with me! My machines are at your command! 
<laughs> Look who joins the fray. Good. I was hoping you'd keep this interesting. I assure you, Blightcaller, the pleasure is all mine. The Void Elves. Those traitors must be dealt with. The 10 to 1 advantage that quickly disappears with the arrival of Illyria, the Void Elves, Mechatork and Gnomish Ingenuity. Not even the Blight is able to stop that assault and Sylvanas believes that it's time to play their final card. Retreat! No, they must not escape. Everyone, follow Nathanos to the courtyard. I will block the Alliance from behind. Keep moving! So good of you to finally show up, High Overlord. I had to see it for myself. Was this your plan all along? Is this how you meant to achieve victory? This honorless travesty? Honor means nothing to a corpse, Sarfang. You have the luxury of underestimating death. But it is something with which I am intimately familiar. Maybe you don't care if your people die so long as it's honorable. But to me, this horde is worth saving. Anyone who disagrees does not deserve to stand among us. So die your warrior's death, High Overlord Sarfang. It means little to me. Perhaps I will raise your broken body to serve me once more. Or perhaps you will have a chance to say hello to your son. Champions! With me! You are invited to bear witness to the grand finale. The Horde is falling back again? What is their strategy here? That accursed blight blocks our path! Our forces can't follow her! We can't let the Warchief escape. Capturing her is the only way to win this war. Understood. We will not let you go alone. Mechatork, can your flying machines get us past this blight? I don't have many of them, but the ones I do are at your disposal! So be it. Champions, with me, Mechatork. Backtrack through the keep with the rest of our forces and station them at Brill. Be ready to strike on my command. You got it! Stand aside, Saurfang. This war is not yours to bear alone. And there is no honor in killing you. Your father was a man of honor, boy. You know nothing of the sort. I will never stand down. I eat, sleep, and die by the sword. What price have you paid for your people? My father gave everything for the Alliance. The question is, are you willing to do the same for the Horde? My life for the Horde! Surrounded by the enemy, Sourfang is ready to lay down his life for the Horde. He can no longer follow Sylvanas and desperately seeks that glorious death in battle. Yet Enduin, he's heard her tales about Sourfang from his father, an orc that embodies the honor of the Horde so much so that even back when, during Ralph the Lich King, Varian showed him respect. Alliance, hold! No. I demand an honorable death. My father once said that Varrock Saurfang embodied the honor of the Horde. He admired you for that. And so do I. Listen to me. There is no honor in this. That is not for an Alliance King to decide. At this moment, it is. Take him to the stockades. When I return, we will speak of honor, and how it may yet be reclaimed. If you return. 
interested to note is that in past data mind cutscenes, the dialogue said we will speak of honor and actions, not on how it may yet be reclaimed. We've done it. Sylvanas will finally answer for her crimes. Champions, to my side. You abandoned Sauerfang to die out there! It is the death he wanted. If that troubles you, you're free to join him. Or you can tend to the living. The choice is yours. For the Horde. You know what must be done. Go, my champion. playing soldier. Our king just routed your army! <sighs> Muzzle your dog, your majesty. Sylvanas Windrunner, you have led the Horde to a place without honor. Lordaeron is ours. It's over. Your father would be so proud. Is that... His. You've gotten it all bloody. Only one of us wanted this war. You call for peace when it suits you, little lion. But you're quick enough to kill. I should have killed you when last we met. How rude, sister. You're a guest in my home. Your home? You desecrate that throne with your filth! You put the torch to Teldrassil. But I failed those who burned. I will not make that mistake again. Surrender. Or die. The Siege of Lordaeron, with both sides leaving the battlefield, getting ready for the true war as that will play out in Battle for Azeroth. Sylvanas proclaims that the alliance has won nothing, but is that really the case? This will lead us into the opinion slash reaction part of the video. This is the story so far, the battle for Lordaeron, with the end result is, well, a whole bunch of forces are dead, Saurfang is imprisoned, Jaina has made a return, and the Undercity is taken away from the Horde. For those sticking around, for the reactions and whatnot, these are some of my initial reactions while playing through it, and some answers to the questions in the chat. I mean, it's cheesy. And Jaina showing up makes no fucking sense. And Sylvanas is twirling her mustache like a true villain. But I, I love that moment. 
I oh I love that moment. Jaina showing up with her ship. Sylvanas with her plan upon plan upon plan. Sourfang bailing. Bane once again just following the lead of the war chief because he has no voice. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh man. This moment with Bane is just um you know. We got one of the first reactions to what Bane actually thinks about these events. He's like, how could you have left Sourfang out there? What have you done? To die out there. One of the first signs of, you know, they realize just exactly what happened. We also have a bit of interaction with him and Sourfang in the novella. Uh, if you haven't found out about that yet, the Collector's Edition books are available for free online right now, so you can read them for yourself. Um, but in that, he interacts with Sourfang as the, the Horde troops gather in the Barrens, and um, he wishes them best of luck. And Sourfang kind of had a feeling that Bane knew that they were not going for Silithus. But at that point in time, um, you know, Sourfang was leading the troops, so I imagine that Bane was like, oh yeah, that's dope. You know, Sourfang is behind this, so why shouldn't I, right? Uh, but here we see them abandon Sourfang outside. Like, yeah. I, I kind of wonder if Bane knows what she's done to the troops themselves. There's also the bit where Nathanos is like, talk to Sylvanas herself, and um, she will explain to you what's going on. But all the same, he realized, like, oh shit, what the hell is going on here? Kind of makes you wonder if anybody else knows about the burning of Teldrassil, right? And, and what Sylvanas told them exactly happened. Like, did Sourfang just keep his mouth shut? Surely there were also members amongst the Horde that were there that saw what happened. Like, has nobody told Bane what she's done? And if they did, did Bane decide to stand with the Horde despite what she's done? Well, I kind of feel that's similar to uh, Sourfang still standing with the Horde, of course. Like, yes, they do not agree with the War Chief's plans, uh, but the Horde is all they got. If he wanted, if that troubles you... You're free to join him. The voice acting and the facial expressions are out of this world, by the way. Out of this world. So yeah, Bane decides, fuck it, I'll stick with you. Now this moment still has me confused. You know what must be done. Go, my champion. Like, my first reaction to this, um... My first reaction was, okay, well, maybe if she goes vape form, she can't hold a bow. So she just tells Nathanos, um, go get the car, I'll, I'll deal with the alliance, I'll set this trap up, you go get the car ready, and I'll see you in a moment. And if I don't make it, here's my bow, chill. But others have also suggested that he's the one that sets off the explosives, but I kind of feel like uh, Sylvanas herself did that with the Banshee Scream. And there was another suggestion that maybe his orders were to go for um, Sourfang. But I kind of expect them to, to expect the Alliance to take care of Sourfang for them, right? Like, this is the death that he wanted. Being unarmed while take it, talking to the child. Yeah. yeah, I suppose there's something to be said. Like, And then it flows into the line of, get the car, I'll see you in a moment. And he's worried about his Banshee Queen, like... You want me to leave you alone while you deal with the with the alliance? Go, my champion. <laughs> my oh, Sylvanas, I'll do anything, anything at all. Uh, a lot of people also saw the resemblance between the Warcraft free cinematic in which Arthas returns home and stabs his daddy, to which now the alliance opens the door and doesn't stab anyone. Oh, so fucking good, though. Oh, man, oh, man. Look so, yeah. You. The boy I already mentioned this during the cinematic itself. They start monologuing. They start talking to each other. To which I'm like, what is your what is your end goal here, then? Like, are you, are you really going to put her on trial after what she has done? How can it be that you're not instantly taking her life? And, of course, of course, there's the part of we need Sylvanas to keep on kicking. We still need an expansion, but... I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you know, one arrow, 
Is Malfurion all over again? While working on the script for the video, I also realized that Endon actually says that capturing her is the only way to end this. I suppose you could argue that bloodshed is just going to cause more bloodshed, rather than actually ending the fighting between the Alliance and the Horde. Og, your majesty. Sylvanas Windrunner. Oh, that muscle your dog, you by the way, is so the good. To a place without honor. Lord Aran is ours. It's over. Your father would be so proud. Oh, the face is so is good. That his. You've gotten it all bloody. Oh, you got it all bloody, and the voice like, mmm, so so nice. Um. Now what I actually found interesting, and spoiler for those who have not seen the Alliance side of things yet, uh, the Alliance does not actually chop off Saurfang's head, the Alliance taken captive. But from Sylvanas' point of view, as Anduin and the crew walk in right now, sword all bloody and shit, for all she knows, Saurfang has been taken care of. So, the mess up that she did with Saurfang, because Saurfang was pretty much her honor token, right? She needed the Horde to fall in line behind her, and she knew that... They would not follow her leads. She knew that the Horde needed somebody with a symbol of honor behind. And that was Sourfang for her. Um, of course, the burning of Teldrassil then happened. But still, Sourfang decided to stand with the Horde. But now she can go back to Orgrimmar and just tell the Horde, like, look. That orcish hero, you all honored. Yeah, he dead. The Alliance took his life, man. He dead. It's their fault. She doesn't need him anymore. Like, they can now rally behind his death if need be. But then you also gotta wonder... Like, how the hell does he explain the burning of Teldrassil, right? It's all we have now, so... that That's also a point of critique that a lot of people pointed out. Like, why... Why don't they step up and challenge her to Makora or something like that? Yeah. To add to this, something we also discussed in Discord. Which is, that's very similar to the days of Garrosh. The Horde at this point... They don't really have a choice but to stand with the war chief. If Sylvanas was able to convince Saurfang that peace with the Alliance was impossible before the burning of Teldrassil, just imagine what the mindset is like now. Kicking out Sylvanas and the Forsaken, that would also severely weaken the Horde. In time, someone like Bane might actually be able to pick up communications again and try to work something out. But right now, in this moment, all the Horde has is each other, despite what the war chief does. Wanted this war. You call for peace when it suits you, little lion. Chef. But you're quick enough to kill. I should have killed. Thank you for the 34 months in a row. Last we met. Oh yeah, the last we met. That is, um, of course, from the comic in which the Windrunner sisters actually have a reunion, and the Void whispers to Illyria like, "Kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her," and she doesn't. Uh, Sylvanas also had a plan in mind to kill her sisters, and she doesn't. Um, ending the comic with uh, doesn't matter in the end, uh, all will serve me anyways, all will serve me in death, let them suffer for a little bit more. So that is a reference to that. How rude, sister. You're a guest in my home. Your home? You desecrate that throne with your filth! Um, Greymane, if you are truly so concerned about Lordaeron and the ones that are living right now, maybe you shouldn't have built a wall and just let everybody die. You dick. This is also not the first, uh, not the um, only time you'll hear him say bullshit like this, if they haven't changed it in between. That throne with your filth! Enough! Mm. Oh, Manduin, be angry more often. Put the torch to Teldrassil. But I failed those who burned. Um, avert your eyes to the Jaina in the back. You put the torch to Teldrassil. But I failed those who burned. Put the torch to Teldrassil. And this has a lot of people wondering. But I failed those who burned. This has a lot of people wondering about uh, what is Jaina doing in the background? What is going on there? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> some are trying to say, like, uh, is she feeling guilty? Is she feeling blame? Is she perhaps responsible for the burning? Um, but in my opinion, I mean, we've all seen Sylvanas give the order to burn it. So, no. Um, my interpretation, and again, like, there's a lot of ways to interpret this cinematic. My interpretation is this is the first time that Jaina finds out what happened to Teldrassil. By all accords, she does not know. That also leads to the question, of course, how the hell does she know up to show up in Lordaeron? Uh, maybe some spy inside the city, but it's the first time that she finds out that Teldrassil actually burned. And in a novel, I think it was Tides of War, 
She actually said, like, what is it going to take for you guys to realize that the Horde cannot be trusted? Do they need to burn down to Eldritch Hill? And now she figures out, oh shit, they actually did that? Wow. But that's my interpretation. And to wrap things up, I've already talked about my grievances when it comes to storyline, when it comes to the conflict and the choices made during the Darkshore campaign. There are definitely things during the Siege of Lordaeron that are extremely convenient, like Jaina showing up at just the right time to save the day, but seeing that boat show up, I mean... Dreams come true, right? It couldn't help but put a massive smile on my face. I would have really liked to see the fall of Bril and that massive path of destruction that was carved out. But hey, you can't win them all. Now the future, that is very uncertain. But quite a few of you asked, like, where do we go from here? Are we really just getting another Garrosh 2.0? Now, anything's possible. And though the start is definitely very similar, I still hold out hope that that is not where we're going to end up. They can take the story in many, many directions. There could definitely be the Saurfang Rebellion, then followed by the Siege of Orgrimmar. That's definitely an option. But at the same time, perhaps the journey for Sylvanas, there would actually be one in which he discovers that some things are worth dying for. Nevanos, he's pretty much already there. He's ready to spend his time in Eternal Damnation, as long as he's with the Banshee Queen. Some of the Forsaken in Before the Storm also start to wonder, like, how long are the Forsaken supposed to go on? And if they do, then what is their motivation? A lot of visual similarities between Sylvanas and the Lich King. Way back when, Warchief Garrosh Hellscream asked her, like, what is the difference between you and the Lich King now? To which Sylvanas answered, Isn't it obvious, Warchief? I serve the Horde. Watch your clever mouth, bitch! But has the Banshee Queen ever? Has she ever truly served the Horde? I personally doubt it. Sylvanas motivation ever since she tossed herself from the top of Ice Crown, that has all been about staying alive. And that's pretty much been the same for a very long time. Where in the past she saw her forces as arrows in the quiver, she then saw them as a bulwark against the infinite. And sure enough, she definitely has a soft spot for the Forsaken. And sure enough, she wants the Horde to keep on going to survive. Because for the moment, her fate, as well as the Horde's fate, they're pretty much intertwined. But to say that she cares about the Horde, and then at the same time just blight and pretty much decimate anything that the Horde used to stand for. There's a lot to be said there, a lot of bit of things to discuss, which makes it rather interesting, in my opinion. Now when talking about Saurfang, if they're really going to be talking about regaining honor, then that is definitely a path to take. Saurfang as a figurehead to bring the Horde back before all of this, before the Banshee Queen. Now some definitely agree with the Warchief's idea of there is no honor for the dead, you know? There is no honor if you die and in order to survive we have to do this, so who cares how we do it as long as we do it. But I personally feel more like, you know, Saofeng has the right idea. Not to mention that the Banshee Queen, she definitely has reasons to fear her eternal damnation. There's always room for speculation. The hell that she saw, it might not have even been her real fate. But say that it was, right? Say that her destiny is truly to be tormented for all time. And she herself has a lot of reasons to do what she does to make sure that that doesn't happen again. To make sure that she stays out of hell. But the thing is, her afterlife is not global for everybody. We've seen Einaru collect the sword and Ralph the Lich King. We have the trolls that have won Samdi. Orcs believe in an honorable death. Loktar Ogar, Vrykul have the whole Helheim Halls of Valor pit. So her fears about what the afterlife is like, that's not for everyone. Like I said, even some amongst the Forsaken, they wonder how long they should keep on going. And those are some of the really cool stories they could work with. So who knows how all of this is going to play out. For now, the battle for Azeroth is soon upon us. Just a few more days until we can explore those sexy new zones, recruit new allies and continue the fight. I was asked yesterday, like, what is my perfect ending for the expansion? So I'll pass on the question to you. What would you like to see in Battle for Azeroth? What would you like the conclusion to be? By all means, let me know in the comments down below. Let's wrap this video up. So as always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time guys. See ya!